Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the two-hour chart of Glencore PLC. If you remember, we covered it when it was uh, crashing dramatically. You can see that it put in a big bounce-type uh, bottom down in here. Let's pull up the volume right there on uh, massive volume. You can see that. It actually coincided with some Fed intervention now. The story is starting to come out. And there's a lot of stories coming out about the Fed and the stuff they're doing. We're going to talk about that in a bit. But the Glencore story is really important. Zero Hedge covered it earlier today that basically Glencore tried to uh, do an unofficial OPEC-type cartel in, I believe it was the zinc market. And uh, I think it was either BHP Bulletin or the other one. There's uh, four of the big ones uh, said, okay, well, if you're going to withhold your zinc from the market, then we'll go ahead and supply it. And that, that's the way real markets work, you know, um, unless you have a OPEC-type cartel situation. But as I said before in the Glencore video, um, the... The base metals are a mirror image of the precious metals. They're trying to prop up the base metals while they're trying to suppress the precious metals. And these are related to each other because to the extent they can prop up the prices of the base metals, that means they can mine more of them. And when they mine more of them, they get more of the precious metal byproduct. So, uh, they have an incentive, but this is assuming you buy into the big conspiracy theory that uh, the miners are actually compromised by the bankers, then they have an incentive to actually bankrupt their own companies to keep the precious metals flowing. Now, ultimately, of course, the market's going to win out because uh, there's going to be a glut of base metals and a shortage of precious metals. We're already seeing that sort of thing. So with this, Glencore has kind of failed with this, and it looks to me like a dead cat bounce. It uh, has dropped, you can see, from that 140 down to 120. Uh, very violent moves. Not a lot of volume on the downside, but that's the way those things work. A lot of short covering on that bottom. There were a lot of people who were short from, say, 300, and they covered around 67. So made a lot of money in a short amount of time. So we'll keep watching that one. Now, I want to talk about the, the major theme tonight is going to be opting out of the system, the, the system that is currently collapsing, and we're going to show you stories of that collapse. But I want to give a shout out to Disney Dollars for this chart. Very interesting chart. I'd never seen this chart before. Uh, this is a side-by-side -side comparison of the gold market to the Bitcoin market. Now, you can see here the gold market starts there at that 71 bottom. That was uh, the bottom coincided, of course, with the uh, closing of the gold window by Nixon and basically a reneging on the Bretton Woods Agreement. And that was uh, that preceded a huge run up in gold. We know it went from thirty five dollars to um, eight hundred. I think is this inflation adjusted? Maybe this seems to go up to two thousand. Oh, okay, that goes to the present time. I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah, there's the 79 run-up, and here's the current one. So I think the comparison here is uh, to this, this particular pennant here. I think what he's implying is that this pennant over here in Bitcoin might be a uh, analogy to that, which would imply roughly a price of about 6000 per Bitcoin. Now, if you remember, I started covering Bitcoin in June of 2011, and uh, we got as low as two bucks after that. It's kind of funny in the comment section of the recent YouTube video I released publicly, someone was criticizing me for, well, how's your Bitcoin doing? And I was like, well, it's up a hundred fold since I started recommending it. So I think it's doing pretty good. But uh, so we have a number of members on the member site who signed up with Bitcoin and that's a way of opting out. Um, and I try to encourage that, try to encourage people to begin practicing the alternative methods of payment because they're setting the trap right now. We can see just on the fringes of how the trap is being set 
Uh, another example of opting out of the system here is this story from, uh, it was actually covered by uh, The Blaze. And uh, this is a, a restaurant in Wisconsin that's accepting silver coins. Now, uh, th that's not really that unusual if you think about it. And if you do the conversion, you can see here, this is late uh, prices if you pay in U.S. silver coins dated 1964 or earlier. You can see there you've got a hamburger for 12 cents, 10 hamburgers for a dollar. I would say probably don't want to give them uh, a silver dollar because uh, you can give them four silver quarters and there's more silver in the silver dollar. But still, uh, I think you can still pick up one of those silver dollars for 20 bucks and that's 10 hamburgers for 20 bucks. That's not bad. French fries, 10 cents. Perch sandwich, 20 cents. So it'd be kind of fun to just go in there and pay with a silver dime. Now the question is, is can they actually make this work? Can they can they actually opt out and just do business in that? Well, can they get their burger for silver? Can they get potatoes for silver? Can they get their perch for silver? Maybe. And as more and more people opt out, then more and more things are available. So in the beginning of one of these things, it's very difficult because you have to convert back into the currency. If you're going to have to buy the hamburger, you're going to have to sell the silver dimes and silver quarters and get dollars to go and buy the hamburger. But as more and more people opt out of the system, it becomes less and less necessary for you to do that. We're seeing that now. Uh, Dave in the X-22 report just mentioned how uh, large the number of people are who are opting out of the SWIFT payment system. And uh, China, China is starting to... Uh, introduce their competitor to SWIFT and of course there's a critical mass with that sort of thing as people begin to opt out of SWIFT and go into the Chinese alternative payment system then it becomes more and more powerful until it just kind of crosses that point and it rolls over. Maybe something like that will happen with these silver coins as well. Now let's look at a story here on the Greek situation. Uh, the Greek cash ban has escalated. You can see here permanent stricter capital controls on 3 million pensioners, civil servants imposed. So these are people that have opted into the system. Uh, they're, they're stuck in the system, okay? So we've got pensioners and civil servants. And I pointed this out many times. This is happening in the United States as well with the deficit and debt crisis situation. They're robbing the federal pension money. So the first people locked into the system are the ones that are most dependent upon it. We also had news today that came out that there won't be a uh, COLA increase for Social Security. So this will be the third year in the last couple decades where the federal government is not going to increase the Social Security payouts. And that number is a really big number. There are 70 million people affected by those Social Security uh, payments uh, changes. So 70 million people are collecting a check, whether that's Social Security, SSDI, or some alternative that they've, a lot of stuff they've shoved into that system that didn't belong there. But that's 70 million people whose uh, income is affected. So here in Greece, it says, uh, in a stunning move toward the elite's endgame of banning cash, Greek authorities unveiled stricter capital controls for civil servants and pensioners this weekend by drastically limiting cash withdrawals and forcing the more controllable compulsory use of plastic money. Greek authorities hope to stop tax evasion through the use of fake cash registers. A shock measure, civil servants and pensioners will be subject to stricter capital controls than the rest of the Greeks. They will be able to withdraw only 150 euros per week with the cash withdrawal cap being at 420 euros per week, that is a total of 600 euros per month, the rest of their wage or pension, they will have to spend by using debit or credit card. The news fell like a bombshell on Saturday evening and spoiled the weekend of millions of Greeks. It will probably spoil the rest of their lives too. Well, how would it affect millions of Greeks? Do you have millions of pensioners and civil servants? Well, we know we've already covered that story. The majority already work for the government, so 
that thing is top heavy and it's, and it's flipping over. And the point I'm trying to make here by covering this story is to show you that when these top heavy systems flip over and they lock you in, the first people, the first groups they always come after are the ones that are most dependent on them. The civil servants, the government employees, and the pensioners and the people that are dependent. They're the first ones. That's why it is so important to opt out of the system early and begin practicing that. Now, another story I wanted to cover here. This is a, a shocking story. This is another Zero Hedge story. It just came out this morning where Tyler Durden busted them, the Fed, on hiding $2.7 trillion worth of debt. Now, we know that the official debt figure, and that's not... This is not the official debt figure, so you've got a couple of number, couple of numbers here. This one is total credit market instru instruments. The one that we look at all the time is the uh, public debt, and that's called also the uh, national debt, and that's around eighteen point one five trillion. That has not budged, but this is total credit market instruments, and what happened today was that the Federal Reserve revised, and they've been doing a lot of revising lately, they revised the figures and took this one number and made it into two. But what Zero Hedge caught was that the adding the two together resulted in an increase of total debt of $2.7 trillion added on to it. And that changed the debt-to-GDP ratio. So let's read this. Everyone has seen the chart of total credit market instruments, which as of its most recent update on March 31st, 2015, was just over 59 trillion or 330% of US GDP. For those who have not seen it, as well as those who are familiar with this chart, take a long look because this is the last update of this particular data series pulled straight from the Fed Z1 flow of funds you will ever see. So did the Fed spontaneously terminate the reporting of what until the second quarter's update of the flow of funds was the most comprehensive official summary of household, financial, corporate, and government debt in existence? And if so, why? Many Fed watchers assumed that this is precisely what happened. And indeed, searching high and low for the infamous L1 section revealed nothing. We can only assume that the vocal outcry that emerged in the aftermath of the Fed's release of its Q2 flow of funds statement missing this most critical of data sets on September 18th was so loud that three weeks later this past Friday on October 9th, the Fed released an official follow-up explanation of what happened. Here is what happened to the missing so very critical data series straight from the horse's mouth. And it explains how they broke that down into two figures. So he says, that's the what. As for the why, note that the Fed said above, the new sum of debt securities and loans larger than in the previous publications, which means that not only did the Fed stop reporting a consolidated total debt series, it admits that the actual debt was higher, some $2.7 trillion higher. Oops. Here's the Fed's mea culpa on that. And it goes into that. Now, here's the chart here of the difference. You can see that the red is the true number. The black is the old number. But here's the net result. The end result is that the ratio of consolidated credit to GDP has quietly risen from 330% to 350%. So we have a uh, increase of, that would be, roughly 8% from 330 to 350 in the debt to GDP ratio. Now that's really important because debt to GDP ratios are the way you determine if a country is solvent, if it's going to be able to pay back its debt. Now, if we go to trading economics, uh, this is a site I go to frequently and we pull out, let's uh, pull out the max on this series you can see that the debt to GDP ratio absolutely exploded with the election of Barack Obama. And that was the Federal Reserve printing up trillions of dollars to bail out the banking system. 
And uh, by the way, uh, after my interview with SG, Sean of SGT Report mentioning best evidence, Sean has now interviewed uh, uh, John Titus of uh, best evidence. And uh, so he's getting a more, you know, a larger audience. And that's really great because he does the best job of exposing the Fed and what they've done. So you can see here, the Fed has nearly doubled the uh, official debt and uh, we can see that other debt with all of the public's debt and the corporations, uh, the debt to GDP ratio is up there at 350 now. This is the debt to GDP ratio of the uh, just the national debt. And you can see that that's almost doubled since the 2008 financial crisis. So this is the beginning of the implosion of their system. We don't know how long it's going to last, but we know that on the edges, things begin to tighten up. We can see with the story in Greece, we can see with this story with the Federal Reserve that things are starting to tip over. And uh, that's something that I expect to happen. What happened in Greece, I think it's already happening here in the U.S. The unreported story, of course, is that the money that's being used to keep the government running is being taken directly from the pensions of uh, the federal workers. Same sort of thing in Greece. And that's why it's so important that you begin to practice opting out of their system. Um, if you don't believe in Bitcoin, maybe you could practice trading in silver coins. Uh, start thinking about ways to trade around the system, outside of the system. Because you really want to get used to opting out before everything collapses. And then you'll have a certain percentage of your trading or your uh, lifestyle or the things that you buy already out of the system. It'll be a much easier transition when they lock down the system and the system collapses. And we'll talk to you next time.